loops it kind of forms an infinity loop this will help you understand that all of these things can coincide with one another you can see that there are lines which are diverging and there are lines which are converging which means that the part these parts of process expect you and your teams to diverge at times with information and to converge as in narrow down on that information this needs to be constant you need to constantly diverge go out in the audience gather maximum information and converge narrow down get into this uh, get into the answers get into the right definition of what you found out let us now look at the double diamond of how it looks uh, as you can see we follow us we follow a loop between discover define develop and deliver if you, if the deliver part is if you can, if the if you actually find the right solution and you are being able to deliver that is the place where you deliver but if not you evolve and you learn better as a as a matter of fact evolution relates to adaptation which means if you need to adapt your solution again you have to iterate smaller things you have to remove the vestigial parts and then you start with discover again or you start by defining again so here is the place where you have to here is the place where you understand that the entire process of design is in a loop and flows in a divergent and a convergent part uh, to get deeper into this let us look at discover let us look at the first part of it you start by discovering first you identify who you are solving a problem for then you get into get into their lifestyle you immerse deeply uh, into gathering information about your audiences through primary and secondary research <coughs> uh, primary research in design is always with a with a person sitting in with a with your potential user or a target audience sitting in front of you it can be uh, the stakeholders it can be your users uh, it can be somebody on your team but there is a person there is a human involved that is human centered research is always considered primary in designing <coughs> the secondary research lets uh, asks you to document information and collect a lot of data from articles that have been previously published so you, once you have done your prim primary and secondary research you will have a lot of this information a huge heap of information in an unstructured format you have um, you have documented audios you will have notes uh, videos uh, images sketches doodles like the ones you drew right now and you will have uh, the this large set of information that has come to you that you've gathered of uh, by talking to so many people and by uh, giving by gathering so much information which is why the next part is of converging you take this lot of information and you put it through a funnel which is the converging part you narrow it down into single statements uh, you have to make sure that you interpret what you find into uh, getting to understand why somebody has said what they have said why you uh, why you have observed something where you observed it and why you have learned something new uh, or, or why you have learned something uh, rather than what you have learned something this will help you in this will help you in getting getting to the the coolest part of your uh, this will get you to uh, understand the coolest part of your problems uh, to get into the core or to converge into it you, you can follow these three steps you find the patterns in findings uh, get get your findings or what you have observed what you've learned into insights uh, as in derive in derive uh, information out of a lot of information and then uh, deduce opportunities opportunity areas based on the viability feasibility and desirability model basically uh, trying to find out where the problems lie where the opportunities lie where are the challenges and then frame your problem statement this is your this is the place where you have to conceptualize the problem statement uh, is a narrowed down version of the problem that you began with uh, for example if you say that you started with a problem for saving uh, fuel the 
you've narrowed down to a problem that says saving fuel while parking car. So you, uh, so defining the problem means defining the right set of problem that will actually get to solve that problem, uh, get to solve the bigger problem. The next part is of developing. Once you are, once you identify the right problem statement, the solution usually presents itself. But you should not stick to the solution that comes to you within the 20, first 20 seconds. The idea is to get millions of solutions on one single problem so that the right solution can fit, so that the right solution can be formed from millions of ideas and there can be a, uh, there can be a, a large number of uh, opportunities available to be able to solve one single problem. So this is the place where you diverge you gather maximum ideas and you validate these maximum ideas. So you start by validating it within your team members. So you come down with a smaller set of ideas and then you do a more uh, validation with your um, customers, with your users, and you again come back with a smaller set of ideas. When selecting an idea, the best thing to go with, uh, with is the viability, feasibility, and desirability model. You. Uh, the final idea or the final concepts that you select should fall into these, should have the all the, these three parts. And usually if it goes from the need side, you usually will be able to have these three parts. So this is the part where you again converge. You reduce your ideas down to a few. You make sure that all the ideas have the three factors of viability, feasibility, and desirability. And you start, uh, you start testing them uh, rapidly by prototyping. Now, rapid prototyping requires you to f uh, form solutions with available materials like best of waste, or um, start with a solution, start with even a pen and paper like we did, and get into a better and better quality prototype as you improve it. The idea is to be to not be uh, attached to one single prototype and to be able to make multiple levels of prototype as you go on and make it as better as possible so that you will be able to deliver fast. If you go on with one single prototype, get it into the market and deliver it right away without solving the, uh, without solving the core issues that it already has, it will, no matter what, it will fail and will cause you a lot of economical drama. Instead, Start with solutions which which you can test fast, which you can uh, which you can discard fast, or which you can iterate fast, and get into designing the final solution. Ideally, do your validation and iteration process twice minimum. Iterate your solution to a level where it kind of fits into the area where it needs to solve the problem, and then start designing the roadmap to uh, to it solving the problem in the customer journey. This is the place where you need to get the solution from your hands to the customer's hands. So uh, implementation uh, remains the most important part of designing anything. Uh, here is the place where you can decide whether your solution can actually go into the user's hands. If it does not, by any problem, uh, with any problems of viability, feasibility, and desirability, you evolve and you turn it around and you go back to discovering, you go back to understanding uh, the core of these problems, you get into define, develop, and then you come back to deliver. To, uh, to sum it up, you start with problem, you diverge with problem and try to learn most about your problem. You converge by getting down to one single part of that core problem, whatever it is causing. Then you again diverge and develop, uh, diverge into ideas, into multiple, multiple millions of ideas. And then you get into converging, deliver one single idea to your, to the stakeholder that you're working with. Uh, to give you an example of uh, such a process, uh, I'm sure all of you use, or all of you must have used Uber app at some point for, uh, for, uh, uh, for transit within the city. So um, now there was a time, I'm sure most of you must remember that there was no uh, such app available and a uh, lot of people faced a problem of hailing cabs, I'm sure. Uh, so 
when Uber started their research, they started with the problem of not being able to hail cabs faster. And they, diver, and they diverged into a lot of people and they talked to a lot of people who used cabs, used cabs themselves, uh, understood the purpose of taxis and cabs uh, or public transport, gathered information about how this is uh, feasible, what are the problems, what are the realization, and they came down to one single problem, which is of not knowing when the cab is going to arrive for you to go to your next destination. Now, this is something that you can solve uh, very easily because you've already underlined that problem, that little definition of a problem that gets you from uh, not being able to hail a cab at all to being able to know when your cab is going to arrive. Once you know that this is the place where you, this is the problem that you want to solve, they got into multiple ideas of how to solve it. They got into making cards, making maps, giving them a calling service, and giving them a, uh, an SMS service. And then they came, came down to one single idea, which was of navigation. Today, they, what, they have, what they have incorporated is a navigation system that lets you already understand how, when your driver is going to arrive on the app so that you don't need to waste time or so that you, your anxiety is not built whether you will reach your destination or time or not. This has helped them create the desirability. This has helped them to uh, have the viability, desirability and feasibility all into one solution. Uh, what we expect you to design, what we expect you to submit as your POC is these four steps of the double diamond process. The discover, define, develop, and deliver. Uh, in Discover, um, you're expected to submit uh, an unstructured research in the form of Word or a document, uh, which covers all the information re related to the problem area or the, pro or the topic that you have selected. Then you have to submit a problem statement with supporting insights that will help us understand how well you have defined the problem. Uh, in the develop area, you need to submit ideas and concepts which fit into the viability, feasibility, and desirability criteria, along with hypothetical questions that will support your selected ideas. The last thing is the solution video. Once you've made a prototype, which is your concept, you need to show how you've tested the video with your customers through so, uh, building a 3D model of whatever solution is taking a video of it along with the user who's trying to use it. Uh, along with the solution video, you are expected to submit a summary for a business proof so that uh, it completes your entire proof of concept area. Now what I'm going to talk a little about is the business as aspect of, and trying to connect it with design thinking as much as we can, right? So uh, design thinking has always proven out to be a great uh, way to do business for older businesses and for even newer businesses. Let us take the example of a company that we all know, which is Nike. So Nike essentially makes shoes and they have been making multiple accessories for different types of athletes, which are specified for that type of athlete. Right here, what we can see right now is a, is a runner who has been uh, running and has his insoles or has his soles that are popping out of his shoes, right? So uh, essentially what Nike was trying to do was trying to build better shoes for their runners. As in when they were doing it, what they realized is that this is a problem of socks colliding 